Okay, so like most of us, I tuned in to the presidential debate, the first presidential debate uh, of 2020, of Trump versus Biden, and I couldn't help but have my counseling cap on, and the whole time, all I wish that I could say was, oh, how do you feel about that? And uh, bup, 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 bup. remember ego projections, remember those funny little things that we don't want to look at that cause us to really have a go at the world and put these defense mechanisms up and make us angry or, or shameful or scared. Who needs a hug here? Do one of you, do both of you, should we all just hug right now? Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. There was just so much tension and I wasn't even in the room. You know, it's one of those things that when we watch something like that, it's almost like we have to pinch ourselves and, 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 and try to wake up from this fucking nightmare that we live. It's like, oh no, hang on. It's actually real life right now. This is genuine. These are the leaders of the free world, the people that are going to run the world, the Western democracy, Western society, as it is. It's got nothing to do with left or right, cattle dog, up or down, partisanship, but it does have everything to do with the most beautiful, wondrous art and skill that is listening. And me, myself, I have struggled to listen to people my whole life. I really, I found it tough. I, I you know, I, I was always the jittery kid, the fidgety kid, the, the one that, you know, would always have to be told to go to the fidget table because at my primary school, there was such a thing as a fidget table. So all we had to do really was fidget around and then we could play with all the Play-Doh. Uh, I didn't really have a choice. I couldn't control that. So I was sitting there, I used to sit there a lot. But, you know, one of the things that I have had to learn in order to function in society is to stop thinking that this is what the truth is, that this is what the reality of life itself is actually all about and come to the unfortunately difficult uh, reality that this is only one reality. And I had to acquiesce to the fact that I was looking up at and trying to view the top of the pyramid and I was only standing on one side. And in fact, there are myriad sides. There are infinite sides. And that, my friends, is the hardest lesson that I've had to learn. But I think it's how to cultivate integrity and learn to listen to other people and learn to hear each other's viewpoints and sides. And it's something that I'm still really, really trying to do. In fact, you know, when I throw myself into counseling, it's it's the one thing that I have to do the most. It's just to sit back and let people talk. And it's how we function as, as, as adults, you know? And one thing that I really, that infuriated me the most about watching that last night was, shouldn't it be you two against the world problems? Why is it you two against each other? And Yes, you know, there's this establishment stuff and you have to have a lot of money to go into politics and it's all rada, rada, rada and it's a big popularity context, but why does it have to be like that? It's 2020. We have the technology that can record podcasts for hours and we could get them to sit in a room and very calmly talk it out and figure out not necessarily what differentiates them, but what actually brings them together. It's like, oh, you, you, you look at healthcare like that. Mm, that kind of helps me. Maybe I could look at healthcare like that, but have you forgotten this part about healthcare? That's actually a good point. I hadn't thought about that part about healthcare. Maybe it was just me watching it and maybe it's, it's, it's easier to be the bystander and to watch from the outside, but come on, like adults, they're old men. I mean, that's another, that's another thing in and of itself, but they're very old. <laughs> we should have had that figured out by now, but clearly we don't. And it's just, uh, it was almost, it was, it was very, I don't know how I watched it to the end. What seems to be the officer problem? I suppose one thing that I took from it, and this is one thing that I saw Russell Brand talk about on his YouTube channel, was that we have to remove ourselves from the idea that these people in power are going to be our liberators and heroes, and that what we really need to overcome the distress we have in ourselves is to become more at peace with who we are as individuals. And then that will obviously ripple on and affect society at large. If I've learned anything from watching the first presidential debate, because I have become more and more interested in politics lately, my s gateway into that was the war on drugs and how much I think that needs to change. 
based upon the idea that addiction is more or less a health issue as opposed to a criminal legality smite them down. It would be nice for us to start thinking about the fact that when we're triggered, instead of building the armor and making sure that they know that we're right, is to look at those triggers as areas that we of ourselves that we need to work on. Carl Jung, the very famous psychoanalyst of the 21st century, said, where your fear is, there your task is. And I think that's very, very true, but it doesn't just stop at fear. I think it's equally true for all negative emotions, the full spectrum from fear to shame and disgust and embarrassment and humiliation and confusion and this unsettling thing called anxiety. If we can start to remain open when we feel those emotions and to look at them as friends and bring them along to the picnic like we do our joy and our happiness and fun and all of those lovely emotions that we never stop and think, I don't want you at the party, but we always do that to the negative ones. If we can stop doing that to the negative ones and start to look at ourselves as this beautiful spectrum of everything from terrible to incredible, we will start to see ourselves projected externally, and I'm talking to myself here, we will start to see ourselves projected externally uh, on the personification of what Trump means to you and the personification of what Biden means to you. I saw that within myself yesterday. When I was watching those two, I was trying very hard not to just get on social media, even though I posted one post and I was like, I found it very difficult not to do that. Towards the end of the debate, I tried to see where is the Trump in me? What part of me hates to be wrong? What part of me thinks it's easier to lie? Which part of myself would I just rather not see and pretend like it doesn't exist? Then I tried to see the Biden in me. Which part of me doesn't like people that interrupt me? Which part of me just wishes like they could say coherent sentences and, and be authentic and, and really say what I mean when the torch and the light and the microphone is given to me? Which part of me wishes I could stand up for myself more? Which part of me struggles to listen to someone else? Now that's not necessarily a Biden thing or a Trump thing, it's probably more of a Trump thing, but it's a, it was both, you know, you could see that happening. It might've been Trump in the beginning, but towards at the end there, and he's only human, but Biden was getting very, very annoyed. And it was just like, calling him a clown and would you guys shut this clown up and come on man and oh my god dude. So the one thing that I took away from that debate yesterday was really, I have a lot of work to do. I need to stop pretending like listening is their inability and their lack of skill and actually it's me because if I'm getting frustrated watching that debate, then I have work to do on myself because if I didn't have any work to do on myself, there would be no video talking about the debate right now, and I would be merely spreading love and kindness and compassion to you lovely followers. Now guys, I have just started to really get into this YouTube stuff, and I would love it if you subscribe to the channel. Obviously, you can just click the link below and uh, subscribe, press that big meaty red button, and I'm gonna make much more vlogs. I'm gonna try to make one a week in addition to the MindMate podcast, and I am loving it. So, speak to you next time.